Take Control Books are media sponsors of Mac Voices TV at Macworld 2010. See their selection of ebooks at takecontrolbooks.com. Welcome to Mac Voices TV at Macworld 2010. I'm Chuck Joyner, and we are in Moscone North talking to Bill Atkinson. Bill, welcome to Mac Voices TV. It's a pleasure to have you. Well, thank you for uh, interviewing me, Chuck. <laughs> nice to see you. Bill, a lot of people know you for your accomplishments in the in the Apple and Macintosh world and all that, but that's kind of yesterday's news. You're doing some really cool new things that uh, just blew me away when we met yesterday. I want to ask you to tell the people about it and show them some of the samples. And, of course, we'll refer them then to your website and to some other video resources so they can get a better idea of what it's all about. Okay. Um, so I'm a nature photographer now, and I'm 58. Uh, I was 27 when I came to Apple, and I wasn't really sure I could do software anymore, but it turns out I can. Um, I'm finding that a lot of people can't afford my big, um, beautiful, framed, and, uh, and big stretched canvas photographs. Um, they sell in galleries and art consultants, and people that buy them love them. Uh, a lot of collectors have them. But there are so many people that can't afford them. And I thought, well, there's got to be a way to have my pictures enjoyed and appreciated by people on a lower budget. So what I've made is an iPhone application that lets people send nature photographs or send postcards using my nature photographs, or they can also use their own personal photographs. So what I've done is I've set it up. These are some of the, some of the cards, and they're, they're big. They're uh, eight and a quarter by five and a half. And they're really high quality. I've used my knowledge of color management and printing technologies to make really high quality, photo, uh, fo high quality cards and uh, good printing. And I've made it so that it's relatively easy to do them right uh, from your iPhone. Here's a picture of my dog, so you can use your own photographs or some of my nature photographs. And um, why don't I show you my iPhone app? Please, and I tell you folks, these these cards are stunning. The saturation, the colors, they're so amazingly rich. It's it's just incredible. You, uh, you're going to be proud to send these, and of course you can use your own, as Bill said. Bill, I, it's going to be a little bit tough to see the, the uh, that's so you may have to talk us through, us through okay. it a little bit. So uh, I launch a photo card, and I say start a new card, and it gives me a little menu of 150 of my best nature photographs that are built in. So they're all included, and you can choose one of those, and you can scroll to others if you like. When you've got one you want to use, you can get information about it, or you can uh, flip it over, and you see uh, there's a postcard there. So you can choose a stamp. There's 150 stamps, and I did stamps that I made with my nature photographs, but also I licensed a lot of artwork to make other kinds of stamps. So you can choose a colorful stamp, and then address to somebody. So I'm going to address this one to Chuck at his, uh, let's just send this one to his email. And I can then type on it, hi, Chuck. And then I can uh, decorate it with stickers. So you can have little, um, just ornamental stickers that you can drag anywhere we want just to decorate it, kind of spice it up. There are 325 stickers. People love them. I keep having to add more. People I say, oh, I love them, but would you, would you add some more? And so I do. And um, then to send it, all I do is say, send this photo card by email. Oh, there's something I can do on an email one that I'll show you. I'll cancel this. You can also do a voice note. So I'll choose a little talk bubble, and I'll start recording. Hello, this is a voice note. Uh, they can be up to a minute long, and they have very high-quality speech. And then I can play it. Hello, this is a voice note. Uh, they can be up to a minute long, and they have very high. So, then I to send it, I'll just say send by email, and it shows me a preview of it. There's the voice note, and there's a a big, six nine hundred and sixty pixel wide JPEG that has the the card image and the message. And I'll say send that. And that's all I have to do. Now, if I want to make a printed card, maybe the voice note's not such a good idea because it won't play on the card. So I'm going to just drag it off to the edge to delete it. And then I'll change this address. If I tap on the address again, 
I can choose from my address book his postal address instead. So now when I say send, it'll say send this photo card by postal mail. So it's just like the other, except it's now here it says you have 110 credits available. Sending this card will use two credits. I'll say send, and your print and mail order has been posted and will be uploaded. The emails are free, and send any number of them. Since I have to play the printer and pay the postage, uh, the cards aren't totally free, but they're as little as a dollar and a half in the U.S. and as little as two and a quarter to the international. So you can put that in somebody's hand in Paris for two and a quarter. Uh, the order was posted and now it's sent. Now let's talk a little bit about a couple things here. First of all, you've, you have the email option, you have the postal option. You were explaining to me how, though how the postal option works, the fact that you had to go through certain approval processes to be able to print your own postage and do some of those things and be able to customize some of these things. It, it's, a, it's a really amazing story because this looked like it should be a simple thing to do. It's really not. Well, one way you could do postage would be just to have a, a fixed thing there that said, you know, first class permit paid. And I wanted a little more fun and flavor to it. I want you to be able to choose a stamp. Like this has got a little Viking ship here. Um, and I worked with Indisha, one of the four companies in the United States that's licensed to print postage. And I worked out uh, and worked with the U.S. Postmaster in order to develop a new class of postage, which was... Um, a variant of Indicia's picture it postage, but they extended to the whole card. And that allows uh, you to choose individual images, and the, each of these will have an individual serial number. And so what I do is uh, every morning, I get up at 5 a.m. and I pull down all of the print and mail orders from the photo card server, and then I lay them out in a PDF. Sometimes I have to fix some addresses, people mistype things, but then uh, I make the finished PDF including a digital postage and a barcode here that helps the post office get it to your place really quickly. It has the, the zip plus four plus two, the carrier route sort. Once I've done, and the main reason I like to do that is so the post office won't have to put their, spray their own barcode on it and, and damage the card that way. <laughs> Uh, so it's not enough to just do an application on the iPhone. You have to have the other end of it, something that, a service that will print these and put postage on them and uh, coat them to protect them and mail them. So that from your iPhone, you can just say, oh, I want to send this as a postal card. And just like I did, it only took me a minute or so. And it was gone from my iPhone. But what will happen is next morning, it will end up, I'll make it into the PDF. I will uh, transfer to one of my printing partners and it will be printed the same day and um, mailed either that afternoon or the next morning and uh, by first class oversized postage. Now I had to work closely with the printers in order to get really high quality color. I uh, tried different kinds of papers and coatings and different printers and found the best one which is the HP Indigo Digital Press. And this is a, this is a big press that can handle uh, prints four cards at a time but, and it can handle the volume that's needed. Uh, something like this where there are 75 million iPhones and iPod touches, the volume could be huge. So we have to be ready for that. We have to be able to handle if there's 100,000 cards a day. Now there isn't 100,000 cards a day yet, but the service is building up and we need, need to be able to handle that. After this interview, hopefully we'll hit that 100,000. Well, at least a little more than we are now. <laughs> Bill, talk a little bit about the, um, the the credits, because that's the other point that people need to understand, that uh, this is a system where you don't you pay as you go, but not exactly, and there are discounts for buying more credits if you're going to send more cards, which, once you see these, you're going to want to do. Yeah. So instead of having you go through a checkout every time you do a card, that's, you know, type in your password and say, you know, bill this on my iTunes account or something. Instead... You can buy photo card credits using either PayPal or a credit card and buy them right from the application and on your iPhone. And then you can use those every time you go send a card. It says it needs two credits for sending to the United States or three credits to international. And that way um, we can give you a discount also. Uh, most people, no, nobody buys one credit. Uh, they typically buy 20 credits for $17, or uh, some people buy 100 credits for $75. So the credits are sort of between 75 cents and a dollar, but nobody pays the dollar. And that just allows a way that uh, the people that use it a lot can be rewarded. And also, that since I don't have to pay as much to the um, PayPal overhead, I can pass that saving on to the customer.
Great. Um, I also wanted to ask you to talk a little bit about using your own photos, because obviously you can use your photos from the iPhone, but you told me about a little trick that I can use, take my higher resolution photos that I've taken with, a, with say, a better camera, get them into the iPhone properly so that you will get uh, what you want out of these cards. Here's a, here's a picture of my dog, Bella. And the way that I got that in is in PhotoCard, instead of choosing from the menu of a uh, library of photos, of my nature photos, I chose and said where it says take new photo or choose an existing photo. To choose an existing photo, I can call up my normal iPhone library of photographs and choose one of those. Here's my dog's picture. And then I can crop it here. So you can tap, tap to zoom in to, to just fill, or there's a little slider you can zoom in whatever amount you want, drag it around. If you like pinch, you can do that. And then it also can say, oh, well, this one's a little too light. I'll make it a little darker. So you can do simple adjustments like rotations and, and lighter or darker, and then you say done. Now, if you get these pictures onto the iPhone using the normal iTunes sync, so you have your photos in your iPhoto library, and you say synchronize that library to the phone, um, currently, although this won't be true for long, Apple's going to fix it, but uh, currently when iTunes uh, syncs it, it downsamples them to only 640 pixels, which isn't really enough. And so what I would recommend is uh, taking the photos that you want to use and make one email and drag a bunch of photos into it, email that to yourself, and then when you collect that email on your phone, then you can save off those photos at their full resolution. So then the, the cards that you send are limited by uh, the, the n are not limited by this downsampling that iTunes does. Very cool, very cool. And, and I, again, folks, I got to tell you, these cards are fantastic. Uh, you just, it, you know, we have them here on video. You're going to see them on screen when you go to Bill's website. But I'm telling you, in person, they're just absolutely gorgeous. Vanna White. A little Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, um, obviously, we've got to talk about the, the iPhone app, the price and uh, everything. And, of course, I have to say iPad. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I should have brought my little iPad prototype here. <laughs> um, so uh, to get this app, go to the iTunes store and search for Bill Atkinson, and you'll find Bill Atkinson photo card. And it's four dollars and ninety nine cents, and um, it runs on an iPhone, any iPhone or any iPod Touch, and it also runs on any iPad. Now, not very many people have iPads yet, but I have the development system, and I got to play with one and. Man, is it wonderful. It's a really good user interface. It's this feeling of sort of directly touching and working with the document itself. It doesn't, it's a different feeling than moving the mouse on a table and having that move the, you know, the point and click. This is just touch. You know, it, it, you're not separately pointing and then clicking. And it feels like a much, much more intimate interaction. And I think people are going to love it. And the display is gorgeous. It's 1024 by 768, which gives me enough room that on that display, I can actually show in the, in the portrait orientation, I show the card front and the card back and still have room for the, the status bar and the, and the toolbar. And if you flip it over to a landscape, then you get a giant, you know, exploded view of the card. Uh, the iPad is a wonderful device. I think Apple's got a real hit on their hands. I think they've done something really beautiful with it. And the uh, thing I'm most amazed about is how they can do all that for $499 retail. Um, that, I, you know, the dream of Mac was the computer for the rest of us. And a lot of what I'm doing with my art is fine art for the rest of us. The rest of us can't afford $1,000 frame prints. And the rest of us can't afford, you know, $10,000 leases. They never, it didn't work either. <laughs> but a $500 uh, iPad is something that I think a lot of people, it's, you know, it's not a computer and it's not a smartphone, and it's something different in between that a lot of people are going to get, instead of a computer, a lot of people that aren't comfortable um, and don't want to use a computer. And then also a lot of people that, you know, I know my wife checks email just before she goes to bed from her iPhone at our bedside, right? Just to check and see if there's anything from our daughter or something she wants to, you know, check. Well, she'll be doing that on an iPad, not on an iPhone. Yeah, it's, it's a new class of device, and, I th and it's going to be interesting to see how really intelligent programmers and creative people like you take that platform and what they can do with it. We've already seen what this can do with the iPhone, and now it'll move to the iPad, and the opportunities are almost endless, I would think. Well, I think Apple has been very smart 
to make a compatibility mode that every single one of the 140,000 iPhone apps just runs on the iPad. And then if programmers go to a little more work, then they can make it run better. Like I said, making a vertical format that has the card front and the back. I have to do a little bit different there. But still, it'll be one program. So you can buy this program for your iPhone, and then if you get an iPad, it'll just work. You don't have to buy it again. And I think so that way it starts out with a real leg up because it's already got a rich library of software. There's an app for it. <laughs> and stuff that most of us are familiar with using. We already have our favorite apps and we're just going to migrate over. So, Well, there's 75 million people that know how to use an iPad already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Isn't that staggering? Bill, you, do you think Apple has a hit on its hands with the iPad? I think you've got a hit on your hands with uh, the photo cards. These are just amazing. For I, I've been on vacation plenty of times, and you look at what you spend on just a regular card, and here I can do something completely custom myself, and it's going to look better than anything I've seen in any store. Yes, I can get this to be commercially successful to where it's got a fairly large group of people using it. Then I can bring in other photographers, open the platform, and... Although you can send your own photographs now, but professional photographers like, say, Franz Lanting or, or Jack Dykinga or Charles Kramer, who do really beautiful work, that's different than mine, um, I can have them offer photo packs that people can use with PhotoCard. And that'll kind of open up the market and open up the, uh, you know, I don't do kittens and puppies. And I guess a lot of people would like to send cards that have kittens and puppy pictures on them. So there's some really good kitten and puppy photographers who will provide a photo pack to play with this. Oh, sure. And, and I can think of, uh, even thinking a little more commercially, I can imagine holiday packs, theme packs. There are a lot of places this could go. I could see walking out of the museum and on my way home, I'm thinking, boy, I'd like to uh, send a card to somebody showing, here's some of the artworks that I saw there. So the museum is actually offering a photo pack of the, of the uh, museum objects, just like you'd have a card stand at their, at their gift thing. But this one, these cards get there. If you send them email, they're there in minutes. If you send them uh, as a print and mail, it's got your customizations on it, and they still get there in a couple of days. Are we going to see a Macworld 2010 photo pack? Uh, n no, <laughs> we just released the app. Okay, okay. We're doing this. Next year. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely next year there'll be uh, uh, quite a few photo packs. I have a list of photographers who have signed up that, yes, they definitely want to do photo packs. And it's, uh, it's up to me to get enough people using it that there's actually a market there that they can sell their work. And the bulk of the money that people would pay for these would go to the photographers. Folks, I'll have link to, links to Bill's uh, website. Also, I want to encourage you, it's a little tough in this environment for you to see just how the app works, um, but Bill has a video on his site that walks you through just what he was here punching out, not my name and address, unfortunately, um, but you'll get an idea of just how well it works. And of course, a, links, a link to the iTunes uh, store so you can pick this up and start playing with it. Bill, it's a real pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for including me on, on your podcast. I'm pleased to be... Uh, highlighted. <laughs> it's an Thank honor you. to have you. I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices TV at Macworld 2010. We'll be back with more soon. Thanks for watching. Take Control Books are media sponsors of Mac Voices TV at Macworld 2010. See their selection of ebooks at takecontrolbooks.com. Mac Voices TV is part of the Mac Voices Group and a member of Mac Level 10.